we could not see a clean association between between rising LDLs or ApoBs and more plaque progressions. If you're on a keto diet and your LDL goes up, are you at definite risk of heart disease? Well, new research suggests probably not and that the ketogenic diet likely does not contribute to progression of plaque within the coronary arteries or the progression of heart disease. So it's not the keto diet, and according to the study, it's not LDL. So what is? Well, I'm joined by Dr. Matt Budoff, the principal investigator of this study, to talk about the details. All right, Dr. Matt Budoff, thanks for joining me again at Metabolic Mind. It's a pleasure. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, so we had you on before to talk about the keto study and the match to the Miami heart and a lot about cholesterol and keto and heart disease. So I highly recommend people go listen and watch that episode. But now the one-year longitudinal study is published, and I'm really excited to talk about the results, um, talk about what they mean. But just in case this is someone's first time um, kind of watching you and listening to you, give us the, the real brief uh, synopsis of, of who you are and why we're talking. Yeah, so I'm Matt Budoff. I'm a preventive cardiologist, a professor of medicine at the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA. Um, and I was the principal investigator of this trial, but I've done a lot of work historically with serial CT angiography and plaque changes over time. Yeah, and I mean, that's that's really... Being modest, you're one of the most preeminent cardiovascular imaging researchers uh, of of the day, and for the past couple of decades, I would say. So it was wonderful that you were the principal investigator on this study. And just to bring everybody up to speed, this was the study that took a hundred people who were fit this term of lean mass hyper responders. They were lean, metabolically healthy, following a ketogenic diet, and had dramatically elevated LDL cholesterol. They got CT angiograms at baseline. They were followed for a year and got another CT angiogram a year later. So we've talked about the setup in other podcasts. We've talked about what this could mean, but now we have the results. So let me turn it over to you. What were the main findings from this study? Yeah. So, you know, I think um, to some people's surprise, uh, we had a one, we had perfect follow-up. So we started with a hundred patients. Uh, in the trial, all 100 participants stayed in the study for the full year and came back at the end of one year. So these were 100 patients who were ketogenic for years, who had high LDLs, and then uh, remained in ketosis for the year, and then came back for a follow-up CT scan. We looked at plaque quantification. We used a, a uh, um, a clearly analysis uh, to look at automated plaque assessment to get exact volumes of plaque. And we can look at the results of, of plaque volumes and total plaque score um, uh, in, the, in the context of both ApoB, uh, what their LDL was on average during the trial, and based on their, their baseline plaque uh, or or uh, how much plaque they had in their coronary arteries. Yeah, so the, you talk about LDL and ApoB. So real quick, just to interject, some people aren't familiar with ApoB, but I guess the quick summary is it's thought of as like a better LDL. It's more predictive of heart disease than just LDL alone, um, but yet somewhat si similar still to LDL in that it's a cholesterol-based, lipoprotein-based measurement. Yes, and they go very parallel to each other. Just, uh, yeah, I always tell people B is for bad particles. So ApoB is more of a, how many bad lipid particles do you have floating around as compared to just what we would categorize as LDL? Because some may get miscategorized or not be included in that LDL value. So ApoB is thought to be a little better as far as um, capturing all of the, the atherogenic particles or the particles that promote plaque, um, if you will. Right. So atherogenic particles, bad particles as they're known, but yet despite that, this study didn't show much of association or an association at all between LDL and ApoB and the amount of plaque seen in the arteries. So, so you mentioned previously as a surprise to some. So was that a surprise to you that there wasn't that correlation between LDL, ApoB, and coronary artery disease? Um, you know, I think I, I was a I was a little surprised. I, I came at this very agnostic. I I didn't I didn't um you know come in with a, with a, uh, any skin in the game on either side of this of this look. I was just the the independent investigator who looked at the data, and I thought there might be a relationship between how high the LDL goes and how much plaque progression. 
there is over the course of a year, but we looked at LDL, we looked at ApoB, we looked at both particles, we looked at, at uh, and we could not see a clean association between, between rising LDLs or ApoBs and more plaque progression. So LDL did not predict who's going to have plaque progression, but we did find that the baseline calcium score or the baseline plaque volumes did have a big prediction in who developed more plaque. So I think it it's a very important finding. And I think it also provides a, a bit of caution for those people on the ketogenic diet who have these very high LDLs that if they have underlying plaque, they are still at risk of having progression of heart disease and they need to do more, more, or more about it than just remain on the ketogenic diet as their only treatment of, of their uh, cardiac status. Yeah. And that, that brings up a really interesting point though. So, you know, obviously this study was in this patient population specifically, uh, lean, metabolically healthy, following the keto diet with very high LDL levels that we would only see probably in, in genetic mutations otherwise. But that statement you just made that if they have plaque, they need to be more cautious and take other measures. I mean, does does that apply to the general population as a whole beyond people following the keto diet? Or, or do you think it was specific for people following the keto diet? No, I think it's exactly the same as a general population. If I find somebody who has plaque in their coronaries, I'm going to work on drugs and 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 interventions that we know reduce plaque over time. And we know that the statins reduce plaque. So independent of this LDL hypothesis or this LDL discussion, statins reduce plaque in the coronaries and slow or stop atherosclerosis. So if they're on the ketogenic diet and they have no plaque, they continue on the ketogenic diet. I don't recommend any specific therapies. I personally don't care what their LDL value is. Um, if they have plaque in their coronaries, I want to treat them with drugs like a statin, maybe an aspirin tablet, maybe other therapies for their underlying atherosclerosis or coronary artery disease, independent of their LDL value of their ketogenic diet or of their other uh, uh, risk factors. Yeah. And I think that's an important differentiation. So if someone is on a ketogenic diet they're using it for, as a medical intervention, seeing clinical benefits. Is there any evidence that that puts them at a higher, and they have plaque? So let me clarify, and they have plaque. Is there any evidence that being in ketosis, being on a keto diet, puts them at a higher risk for plaque development in the future compared to anybody else with plaque? And that's what we couldn't show. We couldn't show that in that exact population that just being, having a, a elevated uh, uh, plaque and being ketogenic had any difference in their plaque progression or, or cardiovascular risk, but it also didn't reverse the heart disease or, or you know, in any significant way. So it's not like it's a cure for plaque in the coronaries either. I think there's a lot of great benefits, and I, I, I have a lot of patients who are uh, on these diets who feel better, who lose weight, who have better control of their diabetes, who have better control of their of their bowel issues and some of their uh, uh, um, different different uh, diseases that that this diet has helped them quite a bit on but I treat their heart disease independent of their of their diet yeah now when we look at results results are often presented as a mean as an average as you know a total sum but then you can look at the individuals as well. Um, and you can see in this study individuals with LDL cholesterol of 500, 600 with no plaque or no plaque progression. Um, and then, but we can, we can also see that there were, I believe, six patients who had less plaque on follow-up despite LDL levels far above 200. Um, was that surprising, this, this basically plaque regression in some individuals despite the elevated LDL? I think so. I think, you know, that, that obviously does talk about some individual variability here. Um, uh, but, I, you know, I mean, and I'm, I, I think that's, that's really interesting to see some of these, quote, regressors despite what would most people would say is, you know, really high uh, LDL uh, or ApoB levels. Um, uh, I, I would just again 
you know, there are also some progressors. So, so I, I don't want to sell this as a cure for heart disease, but I do think that not all patients, uh, I think some patients actually did benefit from a cardiovascular perspective being on, uh, uh, even despite these high LDL values, being on a ketogenic diet. Yeah, and that's a great point. I mean, someone could take that one example or those few examples of someone having plaque regression and say, see, ketosis cures heart disease. And like, well, well hang on a second. We can't, we can't overstate that and, and, and don't right. want to get too aggressive. I'm really not it. concluding that. Right. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, right. Um, now, and I, that's why I just don't want people to, to take the wrong message that right? a, a few people regress and that's great. But, but we did see some progression as well, and I think we have to individualize it. And if you are a regressor and you're, you're getting better and your coronaries are getting better, then sure, you're on the right track. And if, you're, if you have plaque on your baselines, you know, if you get your evaluation and you find out that you're a person who already has athero, I would follow it. And if it's getting worse, I would do more for it and use this as an informative process to decide, you know, am I on the right track or do I need to do more than I'm doing already? Yeah. So, well, so now let's put ourselves in the shoes of the, you know, the general cardiologist, the lipidologist all over the world where they have a patient who walks in on a ketogenic diet with LDLs in the two, three, four hundreds. Um, and it makes them very nervous, right? Because they're not used to necessarily seeing patients with levels this high. Up until this point, I mean, I would say almost uniformly, the reaction is stop the keto diet and start a, a statin or other cholesterol-lowering medication. Now that this study is published, do you think that will or should change the way that the cardiologists approach these patients? I would hope so. I mean, our guidelines already talk about if you have a coronary calcium score of zero, that you can forego statin therapy. So these patients theoretically fall into that category as well. And if they don't have plaque in their coronaries, if they are among the patients, and remember in our trial, that was not uncommon. Uh, you know, half the patients in our study had no plaque at baseline. So it, despite LDLs that would, you know, really raise the raise the, you know, the, the hair on the back of some cardiologist's neck. Um, uh, their median LDL was 237, which is a big number when you think about, you know, compared to normal populations. If they have no plaque, I'm very comfortable saying they're at no cardiovascular risk and can continue the ketogenic diet for other, for other benefits and don't, don't, you know, they don't need a statin and they don't need to change their diet. But I had a patient the other day who was on the ketogenic diet. He's felt much better. He looked much better. Um, but he had a lot of plaque at, uh, on his skin. And I said, you know what? We're going to have to do more than just continue the diet and say that that, that LDL is okay. Because for that person, they have underlying plaque. And that could be multifactorial and have nothing to do with the KD diet. But we can't ignore heart disease because they're on the KD diet. It doesn't protect them from future development of plaque. Another finding that we found in this trial, if they have plaque, they're still at risk of developing more plaque. And we know that if they're plaque progressing, they're at risk of, of a heart attack, stroke, or cardiovascular death. So we, we definitely want to treat them differently based on their, on their score. So I get a CT angio when I see a, a uh, um, a lean mass hyperresponder to see if they're in that group that have clean coronaries and continue on, you're great. Or you have plaque, maybe from other reasons, maybe from multiple reasons, you need to be on on some other therapies. Yeah, that, that that's such a, a great point about how to evaluate that. So you mentioned getting a CT angiogram. So you mentioned also that more than half of the um, subjects in the study had a zero calcium score. So the calcium score, the more, I guess you could say, rudimentary test compared to the CT angiogram. But the CT angiogram with the clearly health analysis of the plaque quantification, there it's incredibly rare to see zero plaque because they're, they're looking at very different things. So tell us, um, do you have a threshold of plaque or how do you interpret that when you're getting the more sensitive test that's going to pick up the smallest amounts of plaque in the CT angiogram? Yeah, you know, I'm I'm very comfortable with a calcium score of zero, uh, or and or a, a a CT angiogram that looks normal. So I I I'm not worried about finding that that very small amount of of 
non-calcified plaque or low attenuation plaque that is not visible to the naked eye that a machine theoretically can pick up. I, I so I, I'm I think if if I read the study or if I if I have somebody I know who you know if it's read by a reasonable person or who has experience and they say there's no plaque present, uh, I think that's a good place to stop. Um, um, the you know Medicare pays for these advanced plaque metrics now, but you have to have a one to seventy percent stenosis. You can't have normal coronaries and get that that test covered by insurance. So so I, I think I would go along with that and and say uh, a score zero, calcium score of zero, no visible plaque by a human eye is a good enough metric of low risk. You're good. You don't need more testing. Well, well, now I want to talk about the the paper itself, and um, you know, it was published in Jack Advances, as was your previous paper with this cohort with the baseline data compared to Miami Heart, and and that was a pretty popular paper, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I think uh, you know we had a, a very interesting and uh, 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 broad uh, viewership and uh, a lot of response to that to that manuscript. And wasn't it the like the number one red paper in Jack Advances for the year? Yeah, and, and you know my my they taped my presentation. I was present I presented the initial data at what's called the World Congress of Insulin Resistance and Cardiovascular Disease. It's a local meeting here in Los Angeles, uh, and I gave the presentation and and uh, um, it was filmed. And that YouTube video hit over a million views. Um, where I probably have hit maybe a hundred views on any other video I've ever made. So uh, very, very broad interest, let's say. Yeah. So interest among, you know, the everyday person, the lay community, but also reading the journal article in Jack Advances, which is going to be mostly clinicians. So really strong interest from both sides, yet there's still been some resistance and pushback about publishing this type of research in, you know, higher tier journals or presenting it in, in major conferences. And tell us about your feelings about that sort of pushback or, or resistance that you've encountered. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, I think, you know, there's there's good science and there's not good science. And when you have good science, even if it doesn't show what what your own predisposition may be or what your own preconceptions may be, I think you should publish that work and let let the the work stand for itself and the science stand for itself. And uh, I think we did get some pushback. It wasn't this meeting. This you know the the data wasn't accepted at the American Heart Association as a as a uh, uh, a late-breaking clinical trial, uh, but they did publish a, an, a, a single an abstract with an N of one, showing that somebody on the ketogenic diet who had high LDL got worse. Um, um, so they they published a single case report, but wouldn't publish a hundred-person randomized trial um, or a hundred-person prospective trial. So you know, I, I think the science is good. It was independently evaluated in a blinded manner, not only by my lab, but by the clearly people. They were completely blinded to intervention and they reported the data. So I think we have excellent science here. And if it doesn't agree with all of your sensibilities, then we can do more studies and we can continue to see and, and see if we could replicate this and, and show it in a larger scale. But, but I, I think you have to accept it as a, as a good scientific study. Yeah, stated as a true scientist, I, I really appreciate that. And um, you know, and I, I think you could say it's dramatic findings to say, look, the ketogenic diet certainly there's no evidence that it's worsening heart disease, and LDL is not the predictor of heart disease. But having plaque by any means is the predictor of future plaque and should be addressed as such, regardless of the diet that you were on, basically. So. I think it's dramatic findings. I hope it changes the way a lot of people think. And I'm, uh, from what I hear, there are future studies in the works as well to expand upon this and and repeat it. So um, I wish you luck with those studies. And, and I thank you for coming on. And I really appreciate your time. Uh, it's a pleasure. Thank you for having me again. And uh, I look forward to further discussions. I want to take a brief moment to let our practitioners know about a couple of fantastic free CME courses developed in partnership with Bazooki Group by Dr. Georgia Ede and Dr. Chris Palmer. Both of these free CME sessions provide excellent insight on incorporating metabolic therapies for mental illness into your practice. They are approved for AMA Category 1 credits, CNE nursing credit hours, and continuing education credits for psychologists, and they're completely free of charge on mycme.com. There's a link in the description. I highly recommend you check them both out.